because it was a revival service. I went up for that altar call. I felt the Holy Spirit and I come back to my seat and I have this excruciating like stomach pain. So then I get in my car and by the way, I forgot to mention this, but that same night we were at the studio cutting vocals for a different song. So, um, what, are, what sorry, I like, zoned out for a second. So that night we were recording another song and I thought I wasn't gonna be able to go to revival service at church. Um, so then I was like, Lord, I really felt like I needed to be there. And you know how in the Bible it says the Holy Spirit draws all men unto himself. So I really felt the draw of the Holy Spirit to be like, you need to be there. There was purpose for that service and clearly there was. So after service, um, my stomach hurts and I get a call from one of the girls in the girl group and she said, hey, listen, we have an emergency meeting at the studio. I said, what do you mean? It's like midnight. I'm just now leaving church and I just came from the studio. She's like, yeah, but we have an emergency meeting. Come here now. And instantly when I when she said that, I felt in the spirit that that was going to be the reason why that was going to be like the open door for me to be able to leave the girl group. So as I'm driving to the studio, my stomach is aching and I say, Holy Spirit, if this situation is going to be the open door for me to leave the, the, um, the record label and the girl group, then may my stomach pain go away now in Jesus name. And I remember I literally snapped like this. And as soon as it happened, all of the pain from my stomach ache went away. And that's the beginning of the end. That's when I knew what was gonna happen. And this was after like a year and two months of being in this girl group. And thanks for the hanging lights. So, so yeah, so, so I'm driving to the studio, I get there and I can't go into specifics because obviously I signed non-disclosure form. I have never revealed the record label. I have never revealed um, the name of the group. I have never revealed my manager, my producer, nobody. Cause I, ops I, I, I still like love them. They're amazing people, but yeah. So I, I still have an NDA sign, so I can't like expose them in any way, but just to kind of give you guys a hint of what allowed me to fully leave the girl group was that when I got there, they started telling me how certain higher ups in the record label were doing inappropriate things with other people like it within the record label, like the girls. And so when I like found that out, Um, when I found that out, I was like, what? This is, this is crazy. And so, um, yeah, that happened. And then I said, Holy Spirit, now I know. I know that's the open door. So I left. I went home at like three in the morning after the meeting and everything. And I was like, I know that I have to go. I just knew that I had to go. And I said, I don't care about NDAs. I don't care about contracts. I don't care you know, about the money that I'm going to lose or the, the penalties. I don't care about anything. I just know that I need to leave the group. So that night at like 3.30 in the morning, I signed up for my very first Mass Crusade evangelism trip to Chilala, Bombay, Zambia at like 3 in the morning, which was crazy. And there were so many things that had to be divinely appointed. So that's how I know that I know that I know that it was from God. Because, for example, number one, the trip was already closed. They were not allowing absolutely anyone to join the trip because the trip was in like three weeks time to the day. And they don't do that for these like really big international mission trips. So, um, so yeah, my pastor had to personally call the evangelist and was like, vouch for me and he's like sure like get her in the trip like out of one day to the other i was on the trip and the other thing is seven days from the day that i um decided to sign up the whole amount of money was due for the trip which was over like four thousand dollars and within seven days all the money came in supernaturally it was just like you knew that you knew that you knew that it was from god so the following day um the following day after, um, sorry. 
after the meeting and the revelation and everything, I called my manager. I said, listen, you know, I'm leaving the group. And she said, I knew that you were going to call me to tell me this. She's like, and I'm okay with it. So like, I had tried to leave before. She's like, remember this, remember that, remember this, remember that. If you decide to do this, blah, blah, blah. Like bringing all these things, reasons why I couldn't leave. And this time was like so different because, um, because uh, the Holy Spirit had really touched her heart. And she knew, she's like, I just know that you're not happy here. I just know that like, you know, whatever. And like when I was finally fully walking, and the purpose of God for my life, like master state evangelism, mission trips, like evangelism at any scale, um, they would reach out to me and be like, you know what? You look so much happier. You just like radiate and you can tell that you're walking in, you know, the fullness of the call of God over your life. So it's like when these, it's like when even unsaved people can see that, you know that you're doing something right, you know? So it was, it was really cool. It was really cool to see all of that happen. And then obviously every day after that has been like me living my dream life, just going from nation to nation, state to state, city to city, bringing people to Christ. It's the most rewarding, fulfilling thing ever. Did I get lots of backlash? Like, like, Joanna, why would you leave the all the fame, the glamour, the luxuries, the money, like all of these things, you know? But the Lord really humbled me because I remember when I first decided to be in the girl group, I told the Lord, Lord, I'm going to join the record label so that I can build my platform to then use for your glory. And I remember the day that I finally left the girl group. I heard the Holy Spirit tell me God was speaking to me and he said, like it was like a rebuke, but in the most gentle way, he said, how dare you think that I need man to give you the platform that I'm going to give you. And I was like, wow, Lord, like he humbled me so much. It's like, how dare you think I need my own creation to help get to you what I want to give you? And I was like, wow, Lord. So I learned just so much through that experience and I got to minister to a whole lot of people. So obviously a testimony is there for a reason because growing up, I said, Lord, I've never steered away from you. I've never had a sip of alcohol. I've never smoked. I've never partied. I've never done any of these worldly things. Why would anyone want to listen to me? When I go and preach your gospel, they're going to say, this goody two shoes is trying to tell me what to do when she has no idea what life was like for me. So just the fact that... <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Just the fact that... <laughs> 